I need to, I need to uh, listen more. Right. I'm there. Hebrews chapter 9. Yeah, 16 and 17. Hebrews okay. chapter 9, 16 and 17. Would you read that for everyone? In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it, because a will is in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is living. All right. So now sometimes I have a problem when I read. Sometimes I don't understand it, so I have to read it again. So you want to look at it again as well. What translation are you reading from? I am reading... Sorry, I got like a couple different Bibles. Um... This is the NIV. NIV. Alright. I'm just trying to find my NIV so I can be on the same page with you. Oh, I found it. It's an older one, though, but which maybe it'll word it similar to you. So let me get turned back over there. And it teaches the same thing. I'm not trying to get out of any kind of translation. I just want us to kind of be on the same page. So let me read it again. See if yours says this again. In the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it, because a will is enforced only when someone has died. It it never takes effect while the one who made it is living. Did you say something like that? Yep, exactly. All right, so you understand what a will is. I don't know, your little picture don't look like you're old enough to have children, but, you know, like if you leave um, uh, someone, uh, if I leave you a boat and you're my child, when do you get the boat? Sorry, say that again. So do you understand how a will works? Yeah, I understand how a will works. Okay. I give an illustration like if I had a boat and I give you a and I put that in my will, when do you get the boat? Sure. Yeah, when do you get it? After you die. Right. All right. So this will here is talking about the new covenant. It's talking about the New Testament. Some translations say the New Covenant, the New Testament. King James says that. See verse 15, it says, For this reason Christ is the mediator of a new what? A new covenant. I mean, dude, I agree with all this. I'm just going to see, like, how are you connecting this to the thief on the cross? Okay, so that's why I'm going to help you a little bit. So, so the New Covenant, according to this, goes in force after Jesus died, right? Yes. Okay. So when he saved the thief, did he save the thief under the old covenant or the new covenant? Um, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess you could say that, yeah, he went to Abraham's bosom and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean he's not. Um... That's not what I asked. Okay. I asked, listen to my question. I'm not trying to be mean, Alex. I want you, it's a very simple question. When Jesus saved the thief, did he save him under A, the old covenant, or B, the new covenant? A or B, that's your multiple choice. I would say B. So, so he saved him under the new covenant. So we have a contradiction within what Hebrews 9, because it says a, a covenant goes in force after men are dead. So you're saying Jesus was dead when he was talking to the thief. Is that what you're going to say? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Well, then how is it B if it contradicts Hebrews 9, 16 and 17? Is it B because you just want to argue, or is it B because you really don't understand that Jesus was alive, then he died, then his new will and covenant went in force? Which one is it? Because I can't read your heart. So are you just wanting to hold on that he's under the new covenant even though he's still alive? No, nah, man. Um no, I'm about to go into seminary, so obviously my heart is, you know, for the Lord. Okay, so then it's just a lack of understanding. So was Jesus alive when he saved him? Yes. Okay, since he was alive, does Hebrews tell us the new covenant did not go into it? Sure. Okay, so therefore the conclusion is he saved him under the old covenant. So, but what you're saying is... No, it doesn't, it doesn't, hey, I froze up. Give me just a second. Sorry, brother. Can you hear me? Okay, I froze up. I'm back. Brother, can you hear me? 
Yeah, I said I froze up on back. So what are you saying? Well, I I'm just trying to get to the the number one point that you have on the um on your post saying water baptism is required to be saved. Okay, but did I answer your question about the thief? Does it make sense? Yeah, it 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 does. I see where you're coming from, but oh, that still to, doesn't that just to make sure I'm not trying to be mean, but for someone to really fully understand, like see I could preach Baptist doctrine. I understand I understand these denominations. So if you understand my argument, explain it exactly like I would explain it, like I did to you. No, I just don't understand how you're saying water baptism is required to be we're saved. Not, we're not talking. We're not moving on to that because I want to make sure you understand the thief on the cross. Yeah, I believe the thief on the cross. Yeah, possibly could have went to Abraham's bosom. Therefore, he gets another chance at hearing the gospel. That doesn't mean he's not saved. Just because we talk about. So if you're going to seminary school, you're going to have to learn how to listen because I said the whole argument. The whole thing about the thief on the cross is what covenant did he was he saved under? That's why we're talking about this. So and you, and we clarified it shouldn't take fifteen minutes to explain this. You got it. You just want to ramble about Abraham's bosom. He gets a second chance. The question was was he saved under the old covenant or the new covenant? Which one was he saved under? Will you admit it now that he was saved under the old covenant? Okay, sure. For the sake of the argument, yes. The no. old covenant. The old no, covenant. We're not, doing, we're not doing the sake of the argument. We're not going to. I'm not going to waste time with dishonest. But it's not for the sake of the argument. It's either true or false. See that guy. He's going to go to seminary, but it's really a cemetery. He's going to go to cemetery school. He he would learn more if he just went to truth or proof, and if he would just learn how to be honest. I'm not. Like I said, I'm going to go run on the treadmill. I'm not wasting 20 minutes on a dishonest person who cannot simply see that the thief was saved under the old covenant and we're not going to accept it for the sake of the argument. You know what that means? That means I really don't believe it. I don't want to accept it. But for me to go on and want to continue to argue about things that I'm not even going to believe something simple, it's a waste of my time and it's a waste of his time. But see, I'm going to put him on truth with proof and people, honest people can see that he got it. And honest people will say, you need to keep your receipt when you go to cemetery school, keep your receipt, because it ain't gonna do you no good, it ain't gonna do him no good. He would be better off to go to truth to prove where he can learn the truth and become just a Christian, all right? See, hey, you guys have a good day.